Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way, have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our, our 56th week. We've got a full house today, not a chair to spare. Sweeney, clear the floor, Katie, bar the door, and Molly, put on another cup of coffee. We're ready to roll. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com where you can check out the written show notes on my blog and search all of our podcasts. Yes, it's just another free service from the Irish Roots Cafe, and you can also phone 816-256-3360 to leave your comments, your family search, your song, or your recitation on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. Among today's topics, Heston or Hastings is the family name of the week. The UN year of the potato sees a decline in Ireland. Donegal Ancestry is the website of the day. And which presidential candidate was the first to raise, raise major funds in Ireland? And the new County Donegal Genealogy Book is the book of the month. And finally, one million signatures ask Congress for nat a national St. Patrick's Day holiday. That reminds me to remind you folks that I've got three podcasts coming out all the time. One of them comes out e each week, at least one that is. And one of them is the Missouri Irish broadcast. That's the Irish in America broadcast. And the second one is the Irish Roots Cafe, Irish Families Worldwide broadcast. That's the broadcast you're listening to right now. And the third one is our newest, the Irish Song and Recitation uh, broadcast. Last week we covered what... Um, all those endearing young charms by Moore. We had a little chat and sing on that, so be sure to check that out. You can just uh, sign up for those free by going to uh, our webpage under podcasts or on iTunes if you like. All depends on your personal preferences. Well, now let's move on to the notes for the week around here. Now, if you've got the time, you'll see me on the cover of this month's edition of the Midwest Irish Focus newspaper. It will soon become obvious that I have a face made for radio and internet audio broadcasts. Enough about that for now. We're also getting ready to launch a new service on our web pages. It's supposed to be a true interactive community for those of us interested in the Irish heritage. But you know how that is. I've tried this before and you can run into some snags, so keep your eye out and see if it's going to work. It'll happen in the next few weeks, at least start, and then we'll be working on it, tinkering with it back and forth. But uh, appreciate it if you jump right in and sign up, and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing moving. Also, just a reminder, our five new Irish county books for family research are off and running, and they're complete, e each one with a full-color detailed map of the county from the 1800s to help pinpoint not only your town, but that little townland next to you, too. That can be helpful in uh, research. It should make locating your area fun and easy. Yes, that's been said before, hasn't it? But it should at least help. And next, we're going to move on to the Book of the Week. Well, the Book of the Week is going to be the uh, one of the new books, and that's going to be the uh, County Donegal, Ireland, Genealogy and Family History Notes. We've got a link, a full link to that book on our uh, blog. But I'll do, a, I'll do a quick little few sample extracts here just for those of you looking for research in Donegal. See how many of these names you might recognize. Here are the most numerous families in the 19th century birth index for Donegal. Names like Gallagher or Gallagher, Doherty, Boyle, O'Donnell, McLaughlin, Sweeney, Ward, Kelly, McGinley, McFadden, McGowan, Duffy, and Campbell. What a load to start with, I'm telling you. And uh, remember that not only is the birth index imp important for resources and research in the 19th century, but the Tithe Plotment Books and Griffith's Survey of Ireland are two very important resources for that time period. And they're both available at the National I Library of Ireland as well as elsewhere. Now let's take a book that we reference in this book as a, an example of resources you can rely on. Uh, there's a book called 300 Years in Inishowen by Amy Young, published in 1929 in Belfast. 
And that book offers pedigrees of several local families, including Young, Hart, Harvey, Doherty, Gage, Knox, Montgomery, Carey, and Davenport, to name but a few. And what else, what else, what other kind of information might you find in the book? Well, here, sources like the Donegal County Library in Letter Kenny in County Donegal. And that library has things like the 1901 and 1911 census records, uh, various cemetery records, uh, notes on landowners, and passenger lists to the United States and Australia. We'll have the phone number and the web page and the uh, email listed on our blog. And there are the uh, donegallibrary.ie. Well, that does it for the extracts from the County Donegal genealogy book just to keep you up to date. And uh, what's coming up later in this episode? Dirty Nellie's is being sold. And where did that name come from anyway? More on that when we get through with these member searches. We'll talk to you then. Now let's move on to the member search list. Well, we've got a lot of new members this week. I'll just take the first. What do we got time for? Let's roll this barrel here and pick out seven of them. All right. New member Michael O'Shaughnessy of Santa Fe, New Mexico, is searching for information on his great-grandparents. Uh, John O'Shaughnessy, who came to Millform, Millform, hmm, or should that be Millford? Well, we'll say Millform, Massachusetts in 1849, and James O'Shaughnessy, who came to Millford, Massachusetts in 1848. Number two, new member Joyce Bergeron of McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania, looking for McLaughlin ancestors in Ireland before 1858. We've got several people looking for McLaughlin, so you might find some help there. And I've often wondered if McLaughlin and O'Laughlin are related. We'll have to check into the DNA research on that and see if they were. Some folks say the O'Laughlins came down from the Donegal area and the McLaughlins up north, and they settled in County Clare. That'd be interesting to find out. Number three, new member Greer Noble of KwaZulu, South Africa. This is only the third or fourth member I can remember of coming from South Africa. That's a good sign. And uh, they're looking for any information on Mary White Cross. She says, Mary White Cross, my grandmother, born in the 1860s in County Cork. Number four, new member Bonnie Vaughn of Spitsylvania, Virginia, needs to find William Levis or Levis or if that's a misspelling, it would be William Lewis, uh, born around 1878. He says, I think from Cork. Uh, now, the original spelling on that is L-E-V-I-S that uh, I had in the email, so we're going to assume that's correct. Number five, gold member John McCreary, sing senior of Wellsburg, West Virginia, is looking for the origins of John McCreary, born 1710 County Antrim or down, and married Mary Frazier around 1730. Died 1777, Lancaster City, PA. And Francis Cahey, born 1728 in Donegal, who married Jean Scott, question mark, died 1811 in Lancaster County or City, CTY, Pennsylvania. And uh, John, your Antrim and Down books have shipped. Let me see. New member Amy C. Favre of Cincinnati, Ohio. She says, I am searching for Duffy's from Carragart, Donegal, and McNulty's, probably from Derry. Edward Duffy and Mary McNulty both came to Philadelphia, PA in the early 1900s. Whew, almost done. Two more. New member Thomas Mullen of Kansas City, Missouri. I have found that my two great-grandparents both left Ireland in 1850. They met each other possibly in the South and settled in Minnesota around 1860. Oh, the 1860 census must say something, and then the little note here cuts off. So that's as far as we can take it. Number eight, Michelle O'Reilly of Londonderry in the UK. Your Kings County genealogy book has shipped. And Syl Blanchard of Penticton, Canada. Penticton, Canada. Your Irish genealogies from Keating's history have shipped. And that reminds me to say thank you to all of our members. Without you, these podcasts would not be possible. And your donations are certainly always welcome. Let's move on to Letters to Mike. 
Dear Mike, I'd like to compliment you on your wonderful blog that I recently discovered. It's very well organized and designed. I just started my Irish family document blog earlier this year. My blog is in its infancy. Uh, you have set a high standard for Irish family history blogs. I congratulate you. Perhaps we can do a link exchange at some point. I can post a link to your website on my website and you could link yours to mine. Let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, all the best. Take care. Michael Healy, the Bally Castle blog, uh, connecting the past with the present at myancestorsrecords.com. Well, Michael, that's a good idea. We're going to start up a uh, really our first links page in probably 10 years. It just got out of hand before we had too many links and too many dead links showing up, people coming in and out. Uh, but I think I'm going to start up a new one, just sort of a test one to see if it works out. So anybody that wants to link to us and do a, uh, a two-way link back and forth, just let me know and I'll get you on there and we'll get that uh, uh, moving so we can help people do a little research on, on other sites as well as our own. Okay, here's another little message. It says, I received this on my County Mayo mail list, and I quote, The Irish Family History Foundation's online research services are pleased to announce the availability of the records of Mayo North Family History Research Center and South Mayo Family Research, covering the whole of County Mayo. This adds another 800,000 baptismal, birth, death, and marriage records to our ever-increasing online database. You can check out an interactive map of Ireland that shows what counties are now in this countrywide database. Boy, that's really good for research uh, purposes. I think everybody ought to check that out just to know what's going on. Uh, we'll have a link to that map on our blog. It's really exciting to see them make uh, progress to provide online records, uh, the, the writer uh, writes. And he says, however, I'm disappointed that it is expensive, 10 euros, which makes it about $20 for a transcription, and you don't really know if it's your kin going into it. They do provide a, provide a free view to the listing, but not much else to go on. In any case, can I po impose on you to help me, given your long history of Irish research? says, I have a brick wall that was worth taking a stab at it, so I plunked down the money to take a look. And the bottom uh, line on this is that he wants to know what my thoughts on McNally being a variant of Hughes are. He said that he's Googled it all over the place and can't seem to find the connection. And that's from Michael in Irvine, California. We'll hear more about him in a little bit in his search. I sent Michael back a list of some of the variant spellings I had on record. And I told him that uh, he had been looking, uh, one, one individual was a Folan McNally. I told him that Folan can also be interchanged with Foley. Uh, that didn't seem to help much. The only other thing I can think of is that, you know, in any little corner of the country, two families can intermarry and produce people that uh, uh, can interchange a name from one family to the other. So it may just be a, a local... Uh, a distinction. I sure keep an eye on any, uh, if you narrow it down to a parish, look into a parish history. You can find really interesting things in those parish histories, and sometimes they'll remark about a family interchanging a name or two. That reminds me, you can phone 816-256-3360 to leave your order, family search, or to ask a question that I can answer in the next podcast. And now we're going to move on to the Irish family name of the week. This week's name is Hastings and Heston, and that's in honor of the member we were just speaking of, Michael Brown of Irvine, California, and he's searching for Hastings, Heston, O. Heston, all from County Mayo in the famine area. And he's got Michael Heston marrying Bridget Stewart in 1826 in Westport, and Hughes marries Michael's daughter in Lexington, Missouri in 1860, Origins Unknown. And that seems to fit a pattern. I've got some more information on the blog if you're interested in that family line. We'll be covering other names uh, in the future like Monroe, Graham, Dealey, Kurgan, and Fitchy, and a few others. Um, but right now, let's cover what we came here for, and that's Heston or Hastings. See what we've got. See what we found. It's not as numerous a name as uh, 
some of the other families we covered. And of course, the family name can be interchanged as Heston or Hastings or Hestian or Hasty. Uh, several variants there and the Gaelic spelling will appear on the blog if you want to take a look. And we've got it in variant spelling group number 838 from the Master Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. Let's take a, look, a quick look at what we do have to start off the history of those names. Histon is found in Limerick and it's said to have arrived there from County Mayo. The name was Heston in Mayo where the family was aligned with the McDermott's of Moylerg. And the Heston name is linked with Westport Union in County Mayo. <laughs> Hastings is a well-known English family name that can be found in Ireland, but some of the name of Hastings in Ireland, especially in County Clare and surrounds, might well be of Irish origins. Several families are said to have changed their names into Hastings, and among them are the families of Histon and Heston. The 1890 birth index centers the family in Mayo and Clare, while some undocumented sources also find the family in Cork in the wake of the Norman invasions. Now let's take a look at the Irish Book of Arms. What will we find here? Well, we don't find any Hestons or or Haston or Haston, but we do found, find a Francis Rawdon Hastings, the Earl of Moira, Baron Rawdon in the county of Down, who succeeded his father John in 1793, uh, born in 1754. And this is a family of great antiquity as they are mentioned in Weaver's funeral monuments in the person of Pauline Royden, who had lands granted by William the Conqueror himself. Now let's move on to the Master Index search of Irish names, which is free and on our web page. And let's type that in here. We'll do a little live experiment, and I'll just give you a few of the sources that come up. Uh, for the name Heston, we're going to find it in the Birth Index of Ireland in families of County Limerick, of County Clare, of County Kerry, of County, uh, let me see, Irish Names and Surnames by Wolf is listed right here for Heston. Now we've got a few more, actually several more listings that are just for Hastings, the families of County Clare, the families of County Kerry, and the families of County Cork all have Hastings, as well as the genealogical history of the Milesian families in Ireland. And our Mayo and Kilkenny books hold Hastings as well. King James Irish Army list lists say, Walter Hastings, and Haston is found in families of County Donegal, and the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters has a listing for the Hastings family, and several are noted in Pinner's survey, including John and F. Hastings. Well, now it's time to move on to the website of the week. The Donegal Ancestry Center is the official family history research center for County Donegal, and it was established to help people trace their Donegal ancestors. You can learn more about your surname, your place of birth, or tracing your Donegal ancestors here. And they also have a heritage exhibition entitled The Ramelton Story, and that's located in the building adjoining the Genealogy, Genealogy Center. Learn about the heritage of the town of Ramelton and the surrounding countryside from pre-plantation times to the present day. Get further information and the booklet about the town trail by leaving a note there on the website. I think you can do it. And that website is DonegalAncestry.com. Just click on the link on our blog and it'll take you right there. It's a County Donegal web page. Now let's move on to everybody's favorite curious news and notes. No matter what part of the country you come from, you might find this interesting. Now, as you know, all the Democratic candidates for president in America makes the most of the links with Ireland. And that's fitting because the Democratic, Part, Democratic Party and Irish America have a long history, that's for sure. Now let's take a look at the three of the candidates that are most often being mentioned today. Now Obama's great-great-great-grandfather fled the famine in Ireland. And we just found out today one of his advisors, Samantha Power, was born in Dublin. 
and Obama's roots go back to Monty Gall in County Offaly, Ireland. Number two, as we reported earlier, John McCain has ninth cousins in the Finn Valley in Donegal and has ties to Antrim and Derry. These are Scots-Irish links to the Drumbo McCains who came early to America in the 1700s. Now, number three, there was a published notice of a Clinton ancestor from Ireland back when they were running for office or when he was running for office. I don't have that with me right now, but I do read in the Irish Independent that Hillary, Hillary Clinton recently gave Martin McGinnis and Ian Paisley photos of Bill Clinton switching on the Christmas lights in Belfast 12 years ago. She is also the first American presidential candidate to hold a major fundraiser in Ireland, taking over $2 million back to America for her campaign, we imagine. A tip of the hat to the Irish in Independent newspaper. If you want to read a little bit more, we've got a link on the blog. And if you've ever been to Dirty Nelly's Pub, which sits in the shadow of Bunratty Castle, not too far from uh, Ennis and the airport, well, Dirty Nellie's is being sold by Humphrey O'Connor, who bought it in the 1980s. I wonder if some people made fun of him when he bought it back then, just an Irishman with a big dream. But he's going to make around 12 million pounds, or 12 million euros, I can't remember which, in a deal which is now in the works. He originally paid 1 million pounds, it says. And you know, I always stopped at Dirty Nellie's back in the 1980s when I arrived in Ireland. I remember we used to leave peanut shells on the floor. Now that it's worth $12 million, they probably don't allow that. I'm not sure. But they tell me that the place was named after Dirty Nellie herself. She lived on a house on that spot, and she charged a toll for crossing the bridge to Ennis or Limerick. And I would imagine she'd be making quite a pretty penny today, too. Well, St. Patrick's Day, will it become an official American holiday? Or is it better off that we break the law and don't work or do what we're supposed to do on St. Patrick's Day? We go to the parade. Well, Guinness is spearheading a campaign to make it all legal, legal to have St. Patrick's Day so honored. They hope to give one million signatures to Congress around St. Patrick's Day this year. Now, they tell me the odds are slim that it'll actually happen because it would be unfair to honor one ethnic hero and not others. Hmm... Maybe we could all get together for one big American ethnic holiday. That might be more fun than just having them all one at a time. For further information, you can click on uh, the link in my blog that says Make St. Patrick's Day an Official Holiday. Talking about Ireland, the sale of spuds has dropped by 14%, they say, and it's being replaced by rice and pasta. And this news comes just in time for the 2008 United Nations International Year of the Potato. Boy, I wonder what the budget was to have the International Year for the Potato. A couple of million? A couple of hundred thousand? I can't imagine. But I want to know, do liver and onions get their year? Or broccoli? I don't know. That's a good question. I might have to do some digging in that. One more note, Aer Lingus bans the Irish language. They've banned the staff, and that would include the charming stewardesses, from using the Irish language on in-flight announcements on the new route to Belfast. Taushik Bernie Ahern says that a few sentences would not hurt anyone, but you know it seems some political overtones are present and they're just not allowing it to happen. And by the way, up north they're also considering changing Londonderry simply to Derry. And those of us researching in that area of the country are used to using both those forms. Borders bookstores are planning on offering Borders genealogy services in connection with Ancestry.com. And they will also have a digital center and include personal publishing at Lulu.com or from Lulu.com. Well, remember to send your books, music, or family search to me here at the Irish Roots Cafe by email or by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world on my phone recorder at 816-256-3360, and you can also Skype me at Mick the Bridge. 
Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. Up, up, and away. Yeah.